Hey there, the Geeky Minecrafter here, bringing you another Let's Play video. Today we're on a new server. I applied for and was granted uh, access to a new whitelisted server called Cherry Vanilla. Um, basically, it's a. Uh, hold on, I saw a creeper. I don't want him to sneak up on me. Okay, oh, well, I'll tell you what. Basically, it's a whitelisted server that I've joined. Um, it's a cooperative world, and it has quite a bit going for it. So I play about half the time in here, and half the time on my own server. So let me give you a quick tour of my new... I, I was going to say base. This is not the base. This is the. This was the original Hobbit home. Uh, when I spawned in, I came to uh, town center, and... You know what, let's start there. i tell you what. Now here's one of the things I like about being on a, uh, a, a whitelisted server. There's resources that have been built already. Uh, including, you know, a mailbox system. And because it is a server, it's, it's monitored, it's regulated, it is, um, they do make an effort to make it uh, fair for everybody, there's no griefing, there's no, you know, if you don't put the block up, you can't take it down. Uh, if you create a chest, you and only you can open it. Uh, it with the exception of the mailboxes, um, the mailboxes can be opened by anyone, however, only, it, and, and other people can put stuff in, but only I can pull it out, uh, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, now, this is the center of town, and one of the first things I did after exploring all of this, there are several beacons, and um, there are several farms that are set up where you can pull the resources that you need. Now, I don't spend a lot of time up here because, as you can see, it's a little bit laggy. There's a lot going on up here. Uh, but if you need something, you know, uh, and to get started, for example, or you need some extra uh, arrows, you can just visit your local neighborhood skelly farm here in the nether. I'm sorry, here at spawn. And it's been set up so that because it's in the spawn chunk, it's constantly running. But it only, um, they'll fall straight through. There's a, there's a bit of lava right in here. Okay, so when they spawn in, because you're down here, they'll fall straight through. Or if anyone's in the vicinity, they'll begin spawning. Uh, so since they don't want it to create a bunch of enter entities and, and uh, build up, it's just open. They fall right straight through to the lava pit. Now if I do stand on these pressure plates, that closes the gate, lets the skellies begin to build up. Tell you what, let me turn this down for us while we're uh, making the video. How about that? Is that a little better? Okay, so you, you would stand here and let them build up, and this, this is an XP farm as well. So I can stand right here, and then when I'm ready, just push that button. It'll cause them to be crushed. Now they'll be one hits, and they'll die. Okay, just hit them with the one hit. Now I heard a couple of drop after we did this, so they're not going to be one hit, obviously. And see the XP coming out at me and then you step off and everything drops down into the lava uh, and they also uh, gather up all the extra stuff the leather the I'm sorry the armor the bones the whatever and they're sorted in here so you can come in here this is a community area you can come in here and get whatever you need uh, I think there's more right over here yeah it looks like um, a lot of bows. I'm not seeing a lot of arrows. So somebody must have uh, come and cleaned them out. There are community chests, which are anyone can open them. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to take 48 and I'm going to take it to the end, uh, to the other XP farm. Now there are things in here for our convenience. There's furnaces, an enchant table, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, well maybe it's at the other farm. Yeah, it is. So at the other farm, there's also anvils and stuff like that. Now, in a community server like this, um, this is an ender chest, which means what I have in my ender chest is visible to me in any of the ender chests that I open. 
which I think is really kind of cool. So if somebody else puts something in there, then only they can see what they've put in that ender chest, which is really sweet. There are shops around here. There are farms. Uh, there's a community wall board. Uh, let's see. Let's take you over to the food farm right over here. So they have food that's growing here. And, you know, you press a button right over there, and it'll auto-harvest everything. And they just ask that you replant it. Uh, anything over what you don't need is placed right in here so that anybody coming in can pull out what they need. So again, I think that's pretty cool. It's really well lit up and although I occasionally hear a mob in here, uh, it's not very often. So here's an ender shop. Here's a breeding shop. I don't know what this building is. Oh, uh, you can check your in-world balance. See, in the lower left-hand corner, it says I have $375. So when I came in, they gave me $500. They did fine me $100 for saying the word crap <laughs> in chat, uh, which is not a good thing. Um, let's see. So these are shops that have been set up by players. So, for example, I could come in and get... Um, let me find one I understand. I don't know what M. Trepto is. I don't know what any of this is. Oh, okay. It's maybe who who is who owns this. So in this one, you can get a stack of sand for you can buy it for $150. Um, you can okay here you can get diamonds. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe four diamonds. They'll sell for one dollar. I don't I don't know what that's about. Uh, so not all the shops are like this. Uh, some make a little more sense. Once you set up your shop, people can come in and buy this. So here's one apple, golden apple, for $15. Here is 16 quartz blocks. You can buy it for $20. Here is, what is that, a smooth brick. You can get a stack of 64 for 20 bucks. So as a shopkeeper, you know, it's up to you to come in and... and uh, decorate your place it's up to you to come in and set up your uh, shop and then people will buy what you put in your shop and you get in-world balance that you can use to buy other resources okay so that's the brief tour of the cherry vanilla spawn point now like I said I don't spend a lot of time here because it is a little bit laggy right here so I do have uh, you can have up to six home points set which is what I've done. Uh, I set one here where my bedroom is and uh, by the way I did create an automated chick chicken cooker just like I did on the geeky server. Oh yeah, So I just had cleared this chest out. Uh, got about uh, 28 stacks of chicken that I pulled out of there just a few minutes ago. There we go, 29, I'm sorry. Uh, these are the ones that I was cooking during testing. So these are the ones that I cooked, uh, got as a result of it actually cooking while I'm down here working. So I created a hobbit hole. I put a few resources in here, and I've begun my mine. Now, I am opening the mine up to anybody who wants to use the mine. I'm very well organized. People tell me all the time, you know, they can't believe how much time and effort I put into my mine uh, and how easy it is to use as a result. So I am opening it up to the general public. The only thing I ask is that when they pull stuff out of the walls, uh, particularly in the in the slits, that they replace those voids with cobblestone. Otherwise, they're free to keep what they pull. Um, I'll set up an area where they can bring their own chest down. Now I have quite a few chests myself down here, of course. Now if you've been following any part of my Let's Play series, you know how I mine. I have the main uh, shaft here, it's three wide. I have slits that go down uh, with torches on the right all the way down. Okay, and then, you know, I've, I've mined all the way down. Now I do have a, you know, the back hall as well. Uh, and then I have some storage in here. So let me take you to the back hall. Now I can, I can run down there, or again, because I'm in this multiplayer world, I can s go to one of the um, portal places that I've set up, or, or the teleport places that I've set up. Okay, so this is the back side of the mine. 
Give it a minute to check to catch up. Okay, with the things that I've pulled out. Now I just pulled a whole bunch of uh, iron and put it in the upstairs bit. Uh, that's why you're not seeing a lot down here. Uh, again, the back side of the mine is too wide. And if you'll notice, the torches are on the left because they're headed back to the main part of the mine. So I've just been down here mining, uh, working, building up my resources because I am creating a new place. Again, this is just my mine. This was my, this was my hobbit hole. So I do want to build a pretty nice base. I'll show you where I'm doing that. So as it happens, I'm going right above where I am. So I'll be able to get to and from my mind pretty easily. Okay. So let's take a quick look around. So all I've done at this point is wall it up and light it up. Uh, I do have a few areas that uh, probably need some additional stone. Again, my initial goal was just to get it where mobs can't spawn in here. Uh, I will build up a, a nice castle. I'm planning on some gardens right over there, um, an arch dome. That's going to be my, my food growth area right over there. Uh, let's see. Now, as it turns out, I have a neighbor. So when you join a server like this, they have rules. One of the rules was you couldn't build anything, you couldn't build your base within a thousand blocks of spawn. So a lot of people have, um, who left this open? Hmm. So this is going to be uh, my base. I'm going to build up and out and uh, going to have a whole rabbit warren worth of stuff in here. And this is a pretty nice view. But as it turns out, when I got to the other side, I noticed I have a neighbor. <laughs> so I'm kind of waiting for this neighbor to contact me. I went down and left a sign on their message board. I went down and left a sign letting them know that we're now neighbors and that I wanted to chat. What I want to do is make sure that I'm not stepping on his toes because my mind actually extends under his place. Uh, and I, you know, if he's planning to mine that area, then I may need to you know, mine in the other direction, for example. Uh, I'm thinking this this room here might be, you know, like a nice lobby. I'll widen it a little bit with a enchant room off of that way and, you know, my bedroom. Just, just some nice, neat little stuff. As you can see, there's my portal right over there. Um, and again, all I've really done is begin the wall so that I'm protected while I work in here. Uh, it does have a couple of really nice natural caverns. I'll show you a couple of those. This one goes all the way through. Again, it's just uh, it's just a real neat little area. Now there's a really deep ravine right back under here. What all I've done is just kind of block it off. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop the spiders but it will stop the, the other kind of mobs. Until I have a chance to go in there and explore it and light it all up, I just figured it's easiest to just block them off. So pretty much, uh, you know, I'm in the planning stages. Uh, I got a pen and paper out. I am looking over, you know, the topology, uh, kind of seeing what my options are. I do see this as being, you know, like a neat little uh, tower area where I can... Uh, shoot the mobs <laughs> from you know from miles around I'll take you up there and show you again you know it's uh, just begun let's see okay so it goes up a little bit higher but again I mean take a look at the views I love looking out over a forest this is my preferred view in real life so this is an amazing view here in Minecraft now this dark void right over here, and as you can see over here in these mountains, um, I don't know if it's because it's a server or because, you know, my my render distance is not set correctly. But until they're lit up, see this whole thing right here was dark too. But I went in and lit them up, and it got rid of the shadows. So what I may have to do is go over there and add some torches to kind of get that to to light up. Okay, so I'm seeing, you know, a waterfall here, 
uh, down into a pool. I'm seeing, you know, terraced garden grow areas right over here. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I have so, I have a couple of different things in mind. You know, I'm thinking kind of a, you know, a, a dual staircase that goes up from both directions to here, you know, with a baluster and, and uh, I want to do multiple levels. Uh, again, this, this section right over here will be covered in glass, but I want to do multiple levels uh, with and just take advantage of some of these incredible views. So this is, I will probably be doing about half my Let's Play here on Cherry Vanilla, the whitelisted server that I've begun using. Um, and the other half will still be on uh, the original world that I had created just for this series. Uh, I do have a lot of fun things planned and a lot of, uh, a lot of building to do. Now, let me take you to, you got to love this part. They've already defeated the end, and they have set up a an XP farm uh, where you can come in and whale on these guys and get a whole bunch of XP you know they're, they're dropped 43 blocks so you know they're one hits uh, they're down to half a heart when by the time they land here all of their drops, of course, you know, ender pearls, obviously, and their heads occasionally, all of their drops are being fed down into this hopper system. And you can come down here. Again, this is all community available. You can come right down here, and these six chests are just full of ender pearls. Ah, somebody's been here. <laughs> I wonder if they just had a recent reset. Oops. Because the last time I was in here, these were, all, all six of these um, chests were completely full. Now I will take a couple, three stacks with me. Uh, if you run out of juice while you're down here, there's a moose shoe cow right here. Uh, wooden bowls, and uh, you can grab one of these, eat some mushroom stew, put your bowl back in here, uh, eat as much as you need to. There are a couple of ender chests down here, and remember what I said earlier, how an ender chest works is for the player. So the ender chest that's in my bedroom is, you know, available in here. In fact, let me do this. I meant to do this earlier. I needed to return these bowls. Here we go. Okay, all returned. Uh, there are a couple of chests that have been uh, indicated or marked that they are community chests. Uh, if you need something, you pull it. If you have something spare, you put it in. Um, here, I'll throw some arrows in there. You know, just just trying to give back. Now that way is the end, and I could, um, you know, I could spend time down here. I could uh, go mine out some of the material from here. But it's just a really good way to come in and grab a bunch of resources. Now this is a, quite a long run, which is one of the reasons I set a home point or a teleport point uh, so that I didn't have to run this every single time. But I'll go back uh, through the portal to show you where it comes out. Let me go ahead and get my sword ready. I'm going to do my best not to look at anybody. I really need to bring a pumpkin head down here. Here, I'm going to go ahead and eat just in case. Excuse you. Okay. Ooh. The end scares me. There's a bunch of Endermen in here. <laughs> now I am wearing um, enchanted armor, which helps. Uh, but gosh, I, I came in here fairly early in the game and whew, it was bad. Okay, we should pop out. Yep, right here on spawn point. So, pretty nice, pretty sweet. There is, looks like a tree farm over there. I don't know what that is. I haven't explored all of it. Uh, that's a sugarcane farm, free sugarcane. Um, it's an automated farm, so it's got a, a bunch of bud switches. And every time, you know, sugarcane grows, the bud switch fires. It uh, harvests the sugarcane and throws it down into the hoppers. 
Now, um, let's see, what is, I don't know what that is, but there are anvils and furnaces and, and enchant tables, you know, in a lot of different places. Uh, let's see what this is. I. Oh yeah, we, we've been down here. So again, lots of different shops. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll eventually let me open a shop as well. Uh, I do a lot of mining, so I have a lot of resources that, you know, somebody who's building something might need. What's this? Yeti shop? What is Yeti selling? Um, take what you want, leave what you want. Hmm. Somebody's already made some die. So again, uh, I find the community to be very helpful. Oh, there's a shop below. Let's go look. I haven't been in this one before. Oh, it looks like he sells quite a bit. Okay, so diamond blocks. A diamond block for 250. An iron block for 10, a gold block for 100, quartz buy for 350, that's 32. I may I come, come back and pick some of these up. A huge mushroom, uh, obsidian, a stack of 64 for 100 bucks. That might be worth it. I'm, ta I'm thinking about building an XP farm. Oop, that one's not for us. Um, thinking about building an XP farm and I'm gonna need quite a bit of obsidian. Okay, so last part of the tour, I'm going to take you to the nether. They have created a nether hub, which allows you to quickly move between, you know, locales. So one of the first things I did, I mentioned this, um, was I came in, I asked, you know, after visiting all the shop, getting a, a few tools and some food and stuff like that, I ask for some help. I ask for somebody to loan me 20 obsidian so I could build a couple of portals, you know, and some flint and steel. And um, Dino Minder was kind enough to do so. Uh, once I created, or once I got in here, I saw the hub. Okay. I started exploring. Now, I actually explored all the way around. Okay. But I found this long hallway right here. And. As you can see, this we're out in the nether. <laughs> so somebody's put up some safeguards so you can run around down here. Um, so I came down here. I, I didn't. I couldn't go through there. Let's see. There's a small place up here that looks like uh, looks like somebody's jungle biome. Okay. I mean, just right in here in the nether, completely covered with what I assume is wool. Somebody created a house right here in the nether, which is kind of cool. Okay, and then, you know, I ran down here. Now, this this bit of the hall right here was decorated, and Eric, you did a phenomenal job on this. Uh, and, in fact, I think his portal's coming up right about here, yeah. So, if I step through here, I'm going to be taken to Eric's place, right inside his little encampment. So, all of this decoration ended right here. So, I ran down here a ways knowing that one block in the nether is worth eight blocks in the overworld. I ran down here a ways and then put together a portal and then popped out in my new world, my new base. So first thing I did was, you know, take a look around, realize, you know, good grief, it was night because um, I'd been up in the nether longer than I'd realized. So I came through here, big dark oak forest, and by the way, th it was forest all the way right up to this edge. You couldn't see anything. So I have been pulling a bunch out. I will re-terrace it, re-landscape it, uh, once I've you know kind of got an idea of where I'm going to build. As you can see, there's the wall that I've begun. So this is going to be epic. It's going to be a really nice project. Okay, so this was just an introduction video showing you uh, the new server, the new base, um, and what we, a quick discussion of what we had planned. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to upcoming episodes. We will, I will be building uh, and mining down here in the Cherry Vanilla server. Until the next time, this is the Geeky Minecrafter signing out. Happy mining!